All right, so in this video, we're gonna go through example number seven, which is about a rocket sled. So it tells us that the rocket sled accelerates at 50 meters per second squared. And this, this is, I apologize, should be a squared there, for 5.0 seconds. It coasts, meaning that it continues at that same speed for three seconds, then deploys a braking parachute and decelerates at three meters per second squared until it comes to a halt. What is the maximum velocity of the rocket sled? All right, well, let's go ahead and look at it. What information are we given here at the beginning? Well, we know that it doesn't say this, but it does say it accelerates for five seconds. We're gonna say that the initial velocity is zero, that it starts at rest, right? The rocket sled starts at rest, and then it starts moving. It gives us the acceleration. The acceleration is 50 meters per second squared, and it gives us the time, which is 5.0 seconds. Now we're looking for the velocity, the final velocity after that five seconds. During the coasting, the velocity should stay the same. And then after that, the braking parachute pops out and it slows down, right? And so therefore, the fastest speed should be right here before it starts coasting or, or while it's coasting. All right, so we've got V naught, A, T, and we're looking for V. And we are in luck, my friends, because there's an equation right there that says Vx equals Vx naught plus AXT. And this is all in the same direction, so it fits those x's, it's all horizontally. We can go ahead and just throw those numbers in. V equals my initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time. The seconds are gonna cancel out with one of them, leaving me with a velocity of 250 meters per second. All right, we got our maximum velocity. Then it says, what is the total distance traveled? Okay, so we're gonna need to find the distance in three individual pieces, right? First, we need the distance during the acceleration phase. Then we need the distance during the coasting phase. And then we need the distance traveled during the braking phase. All right, so let's see if we can get each of those. Well, we got a whole bunch of information for the accelerating phase already, right? We should be able to use just about any of those equations as long as it's got an X in it, all right? So we'll go ahead and use the, uh, the, the second one, the one that we normally use here, where X equals X naught plus V naught T plus one half A T squared. Notice I took out all those X's this time because we know it's all in the same plane, all in, all in one dimensional motion. So X is what we're looking for. The X naught initial position is zero. The initial velocity is zero. So those are both going to go away, right? So we're just left with the one half times the acceleration, which was 50 meters per second squared, times the time, five squared. All right, so we get x equals half of 50 is 25, 5 squared is 25, and we get x equals 625 meters. Notice that the units work out. This 50 was in meters per second squared. The 5 was in seconds. It's going to be squared, meaning the seconds cancel out, leaving me with meters. Now, during the coasting, that should be pretty easy because we know that distance equals... Uh, speed times time. Or maybe you know that uh, speed equals distance over time or something. You can rearrange it, right? So we're going to get our distance, which is equal to our speed at that point, which was 250 times the amount of time. And so 250 times 3, we got another 750 meters there. Now we've got the braking, right? So what information do we have there? Well, we know that my speed to start with, my initial speed is 250, right? We know that the acceleration is negative three meters per second squared, 3.0. It is two sig figs there, all right? Um, and uh, that's it, right? Well, I guess we wanna know until it stops. So the final velocity there is gonna be zero. 
Um, and, and so now we want just a displacement, so we're looking for x here, all right? So now I know it's already traveled some, right? It had the acceleration in which it went 625, it went 750 in this uh, coasting phase. Now it's gonna have some extra distance. I'm gonna redefine x naught being zero right here. All right, that's gonna simplify this braking equation because I really just need the difference between here and here. I need to know how far it's traveling in that third phase, that braking phase. And so I'm gonna just define this as zero temporarily. I'll add all this other stuff onto it later, or you could put all that on there and say that's my initial position. You could say it's 1375. It's completely up to you. Um, I'm just gonna find this last individual piece and, and then add it on at the end. Um, but either way will work. So I need an equation that has V naught, A, V, and X. All right, uh, the first one, the one that we used over here has time. I don't know how long it's gonna take me to slow down there, so I'm, I'm probably not gonna use that one. The one that I used here also has time, so I'm probably not gonna use that one. The last equation is actually exactly what I need, the third kinematics equation v squared, that final velocity squared, equals the initial velocity squared plus 2a and then x minus x naught. And remember we're saying that x naught here is essentially zero. And so I should be able to solve then. The final velocity is zero. The initial velocity is gonna be, so that's zero squared equals 250 squared plus two times a, which is negative three, times x. And so now I'm going to solve that, right? I'm going to do 250 squared, which is going to give me 62,500. And I'm going to subtract that to the other side. So minus 62,500, all right, is going to be e uh, equal to 2 times negative 3. So that would be negative 6x. So then I'll divide that by the negative 6 and I get a final answer of x equals a distance of 10,416. Now, of course, if I look back at my question, right, I've actually only have one sig fig here. I've got two there, two there, two there, all right? So because this really only has one significant figure, my final answer really should only have one significant figure. So if I take this number, this 10,000, I add on the 750, and then I add on the uh, 625, then what I get is my final answer, which is 11,791, which in one sig fig is 10,000 meters. All right, now if there was a decimal up here, or if it was written as 5.0 times 10 meters per second squared, then I'd need two sig figs, and so my answer would be 12,000 meters because I added together these three pieces right here. All right, now that's pretty interesting that I have such a large distance. Well, the reason is because my acceleration is so small here. Notice that I put a negative three for my acceleration. Not because it says decelerates, but because it's moving to the right and I wanted it to slow down. And so in order to slow down, I needed an acceleration in the opposite direction. And so that's where the negative three is coming from. It's gonna take a long time to slow it down because it's not slowing down very fast. It's three meters per second squared. So anyway, that's my final answer. Hopefully that is helpful and uh, I'll see you next time.